Well, welcome. Welcome to Round Glass. I'm Vishwapani Blomfield. Thank you so much for joining me for this session uh, in the series Beyond Breathing. And today is a special day. It's the winter solstice. And in today's practice, we're going to mark that, marking the shortest day as the seasons change. So look, this is something that affects everyone, at least everyone in temperate climate. So please share your reflections. We'd love to hear them. Um, this time of year, the turning of the year, we're looking back and we're also looking ahead. So we'd love to hear from you. Um, I know there are people watching this all over the world and in a tropical climate, of course, the seasons are different from a temperate climate. In tropical climate, as I understand it, there are three seasons, but we have four seasons in the Northern Hemisphere or in the Southern part of the world. And, um, you know, we, so there are these four seasons and today marks the solstice which is the shortest day of the year. It's the uh, time when the night is longest, the day is shortest, but it's also the turn, the turning point from the declining length of the days, shortening and shortening, and the lengthening of the night to the days very gradually starting to get longer. Um, and this is clearly very significant. It always has been significant for people. When I think of the winter solstice, I particularly think of a place I visited in Ireland called New Grange. And what you see as you approach it is a mound, a mound of earth. And as you come closer, you see that there's an entrance, a, a tunnel, a passageway. Of course, there are visitor centers and it's all controlled, but you can travel down this passageway. The mound is over 5,000 years old. So older than Stonehenge, which we maybe think is a very old site. And you travel down the passage to a central chamber, which is a burial chamber. It's where uh, whoever the great king that this place marks was buried, interred for his journey to the underworld or whatever, we don't really know. And there's an opening in this enclosed space. And for just 17 minutes at dawn on the winter solstice, everything aligns and the sun floods through the window and the chamber is illuminated. And people go there. I mean, it's, there's a lottery because the place is so sought after. People wait in this complete darkness, hoping that the miracle will occur. It does occur because those ancient people were so good at calculating these things. But actually, it's this very, very cloudy day. The whole effect is rather dampened. And um, it's from an ancient culture, even older than Celtic culture. And the, there, the image that's associated with this culture is sp the spiral. There are usually three spirals together, and we don't know what they mean. Perhaps people say, some people say, this is a map of the afterlife, the, the other world that you're going to visit. Or perhaps the spiral is a kind of a meditation device. Or maybe it's both. There are times when the outer world and the inner world seem to reflect each other. There's, I, I don't know about you, but at this time of year, I feel like turning inwards and huddling, coming into an enclosed space with my family, 
and just hunkering down. I feel like hibernating, as animals do. And this is uh, something about the spirit of the time. Um, the outer world is, is dark and you want to retreat into, into your inner world. And of course, all of the myths about this time of year, the images, the archetypes, the symbols are telling that same story. It's both the shortest day and the time to turn inwards. I'm going to be quoting T.S. Eliot later on. And the line that really resonates for me is, between melting and freezing, the soul's sap quivers. We'll be coming back to that later on. So, this is also the start of a long period of celebration that takes in Christmas and New Year and the entering into that, um, that gap, that pause in the year before we come to the new year and a real sense of rebirth. But death and rebirth are mixed up at the solstice. Let's get on with some meditation. Okay, this meditation is going to be exploring these images, exploring uh, a visualization really of taking us through a journey. So let's start here in the present moment with the body resting, settling. Just opening up to how you're feeling. How is it to be here today? Whatever that feeling is, is that's the texture of our life right now. How does it feel? How does it feel to be alive in this moment? It'll never come again. This solstice however many we've seen, however many we will see. This cosmological event to do with the alignment of the earth and the sun, the rotation of the earth, the tilt of the earth, the seasons, seasons, move, move through the world, they move through us. And here we are, the shortest day, the darkest point. How is it to be here? Just feeling the body. Breathing. Resting. The solstice, the world pauses between declining days and lengthening days. Let's pause. Feeling the world around us and the inner world. The realm of the heart, spirit, soul. Let's imagine we're entering passage beneath a great mound or perhaps a passageway into a mountain, a 
cave, in other words. walking through this passage, or perhaps crawling through it, leaving aside the light and moving into the darkness. A long passage into the unknown, the obscure, the thick darkness, into the night, and if it feels scary, Feeling the earth, feeling the solid walls, journeying till we come to a cabin, an open space. And the air feels different, although it's still dark. And we arrive in the cave of the heart, somewhere deeply inward. Perhaps we can feel as the breath flows through the body, that inner world, that inner space. And here we're safe, we feel safe, we are safe, protected, secluded. And what's here? What's present? It's quiet. Utterly silent. We hear our own breathing. Our heart beating. And in this silence, this darkness, perhaps we hear the voices of regret, of sadness, of knowing our limitations and our flaws, all that swims around us. And memories and dreams with all their strangeness. A 
and then the light starts to change. Just subtly, the thickness of the dark lifts, softs. Grays. And then a tiny sliver of pure sunlight catches the wall, lighting it up. And as we watch, the light expands and spreads, filling our hearts, pure dawn sunlight, captured in a beam, shining off the wall and illuminating the whole chamber so it glows gently at first, but brightening until this radiance fills every inch, every crevice of the cave. And our whole heart is filled with light. And as it does so, the regrets that had crowded around us, weighing us with sadness, dissolve in the light, are absorbed into the light. as we let them go. The heart filling with brilliant light. Radiant, glorious light. Sun shining in our hearts, through them, from them. The light of new birth And the light shines through the cave and it seems that the walls, the roof, dissolve, open. And light shining from our hearts. spreads out through the whole world. To everyone who is marking the same passage,
from the old year to the new year, the old life to the new life. radiating through the world. With love. Cave upon cave. Mind upon mind. Caught in the struggle between pleasure and pain. Needing a deeper understanding. Just opening to everyone in the world. All life, all animals, all beings. Coming back now to ourselves. Perhaps to the image of the cave. Or letting the cave dissolve with all its secret knowledge into our heart. cave, the mound, the passageway, the cavern, the sun, all of them dissolving into the heart. We just pause Wait. Absorb. Breathe. And feel the body. Starting to make a transition as we move towards the end of the practice, taking care not to jar ourselves, taking our time, only opening our eyes when we feel ready. And that may be right at the end of this session or even later. We could start to move. to stretch. We have to emerge from the cave at some point. Opening our eyes.
So just taking time. Let's hear some of your comments. Winter solstice, winter solstice means hope that our visions for the future will manifest. It's a time to slow down, rest, dream and renew. Lovely. It's a turning point for something new. There's hope. Question. Is there power in meditating while the sun is out today versus at sunset or perhaps in the darkness after? Good question. Well, maybe. I, I don't know. I think all of these things have different moods. Who knows what the power is associated with them. But we feel differently at the sunrise, sunset, because there's a natural resonance between what goes on in ourselves and what's going on in the world around us. It's about being sensitive to that. Another question. With only five days to prepare for Christmas, it's challenging to think about slowing down or hibernating, but it felt good filling my heart with radiant, glorious light. I can make time for this as I race around town. Any other visualizations or mantras, welcome. Okay. Hmm. Well, Christmas is filled with imagery. I mean, there's the Christian imagery, of course. There's the sort of pagan imagery of Santa Claus and elves and, you know, reindeer and that sort of thing. And there's winter imagery of snow and ice and frost. Just let those images work on you and take your time. Yes, Christmas is a, is a challenging time to be quiet, especially five days before it starts. What's the best way to mark the winter solstice? This is the first time I've even thought about doing so. I think that what's happened in our culture is that there's a whole period that starts with the solstice. This is for me and carries on all the way through New Year till New Year. I think we have plenty of time. It's a long pause. The problem in our culture is that we fill that pause with stuff, too much stuff too much drinking, too much eating. I mean, yes, it's time for feasting and celebrating, and that's wonderful, but there's too much of it. So to mark the change, make sure that you can go deeper in this whole period and enjoy its richness and notice how things are changing. So I mentioned T.S. Eliot, and these wonderful lines from Little Gidding, which is in a, um, a long sequence of poems called The Four Quartets. And it's about midwinter spring, which I think is slightly later, maybe it's February or something, but these words are so evocative, I love them at this time of year. Midwinter spring is its own season, sempiternal though sodden, towards sundown, suspended in time between pole and tropic, when the short day is bright, brightest with frost and fire, the brief sun flames the ice on pond and ditches in windless cold that is the heart's heat, reflecting in a watery mirror a glare that is blindness in the early afternoon, and glow more intense than blaze or branch or brazier stirs the dumb spirit. No wind, but Pentecostal fire in the dark time of the year. Between melting and freezing, the soul's sap quivers. <laughs> Thank
Thank you for sharing this time. Please continue to explore your meditation practice with us. Check out our daily live meditations at round.glass or on our app and all of the wonderful material that's there. Have a great day, dwell in the dark and turn towards the light.